sing a song. It used to be just to sort of test the sound quality or whatever, but it's kind of gotten to be like a, a thing that I do now, tradition. Is there a song you want me to sing or anything? Um... Someone who likes to sing to the radio? I can't think of any songs right now. That's weird. Hmm. Yeah. Give me like a, a word or a phrase or even just like a, a general feeling or gist and I'll like <laughs> think of something that I know. What yeah, songs ev- do you know? Everything I- is awesome. <laughs> do you seriously want me to sing that song? Do it. All right, let me I look up. It. They did ask. Yeah. Let me look up the lyrics. <clears throat> Everything is awesome. Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome. When you're living out in dreams Everything is better when we stick together Side by side you and I gonna win forever Let's party forever We're the same, unlike you, you and me We're working in harmony Everything is awesome Everything is cool when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome. We've been living our dreams. I just heard the news. Everyone's talking. Life is good because everything is awesome. Awesome jobs and new opportunity. For more free time for my awesome community. Feel like more awesome than awesome possum. Put my body in chocolate frosting. Three years later, wash off the frosting. Smell like a blossom. Everything is awesome. Uh, except to look at new brand shoes. It's awesome to win and it's awesome to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Blue skies, bouncy springs We just named a few awesome things A noble prize, a piece of string You know what's awesome? Everything Dogs with fleas, allergies A book with Greek antiquities Brand new pants and very old vest Awesome items are the best Things, dogs, clogs, they're awesome Rocks, clocks, socks, that are awesome Figs, wigs, and twigs, that's awesome Everything you see and think or say is awesome <laughs> My goodness. I love that movie. What about the catchy song? I really like the music from the second uh, Lego movie better, but I, I like the story from the first Lego movie better. I will be moving you to the stream VC. Oh, all right. Let's do that. That's right, because they can do that. Because they have mod abilities or whatever. They're not doing it, though. They just left. (laughs) Do you not have permissions to move us? I can LOL. Oh, alright. That's fine. We're just hanging out here. That's fine. Honestly, I think the... The, um... The stream thing is probably just for spicy anyways. But yeah. Well, anywho, do you two want to introduce yourselves? Give us your name and what you're all about. Okay. Hi. My name is Tanny. I am a poor student. And I have a dog. Oh, guess who's in the chat what the right heck now? Just happened? <laughs> it's the owner of the server. They're watching the stream right oh. now. <laughs> totally didn't move y'all into streaming Thanks, channel. S-P-Y-K. Oh, she did it. All right. There we go. All right. Yeah, don't know why there was a reason to do that, but yeah. I guess that's a thing that happened. 
So yeah, we're in here. Anyway, now. I am a bot, so nothing special about me. <laughs> Spike just said, "I now I lurk." <laughs> I don't know why, but Spike always likes to lurk. Spike is almost always in every single stream I do, no matter what time of day it is. Although to be honest, I usually do mine in the evenings anyway, so that's probably what people are most free. But whatever. My bet. A bad bot. Shush. <laughs> Yeah, no, Spike has been, like, the one person that's been there for every single one of my streams. Hey, uh, that is dedication. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah. Like, besides Spike, the only other person that, like, consistently does view my streams is, uh, Dr. Forrester. Aww. Yeah. I usually average about three viewers though so i think i'm the third one um i technically i do have an average of five viewers or whatever um i do need to get up to 50 followers i'm currently at 36 before i can continue if anything else on twitch but i don't think that's going to happen anytime soon which is fine because i'm not making a whole lot of content or producing anything or whatnot so that's fine mm -hmm. or whatever but yeah i see i see Anywho, um, we are just chilling, hanging out, and uh, just just chatting, talking, and hanging out. Is there anything you guys did want to talk about? I mean, there are like topics and discussions I could just go into, but I just kind of want to see what you guys are interested in. <laughs> Hang on. Hanging on to every word you speak, cause it's all that I need. Hanging on to every word you say, and light up my way. Even in a little whisper, hanging this up for love, my love. Oh, hanging on. That's a hard f song for me to sing because that's most of that is in like the upper register, and I'm not good at switching to my falsetto. <clears throat> yeah, I typically hang out down here. It takes practice. Yeah, well, I don't necessarily have the range and I just do I, I know that which is fine or whatever but yeah <clears throat> also Tangerine what are we hanging on for I was trying to find my little file that had like all sorts of different questions because I had icebreak questions I had asked and then they were really good because it was just strange oh well that's that's good stuff you know there's never a dumb question there's always like things to be interested in checking in on and talking about discussing you know it's always good to have YK, like what are you doing in vrc <laughs> um wait are they yeah why is spike in vr chat eh eh You're listening to rain. Oh, okay. So they they have probably room in the rain brought up just to listen to some rain. I mean, you could just pull up YouTube to do that. That's true. But okay. Okay, I have a question. We're also doing a thing. Yes, go. What fills up your heart that makes it want to burst? You. Really? <laughs> Blood. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's also a true answer. Uh, <laughs> friends, you know, good good people in my life, people that are important, special, you know, friends and whatnot. Are you asking of like something specific, or just like characteristically me? Like, as a person. Characteristically. Like, what's something that 
if you were to reach for it, you know that like your heart would just be like pounding so hard. It'd be overwhelmed with emotions. You're oh. right that surf me. Uh, Spike just uh, responded. It slowly advances rank in VR chat. That's a good point. So that if you're in, if you're logged into VR chat, you will progress your rank from like random user to common user to trusted user eventually. You know, so that's uh -huh. a good reason to have VR chat open. Um, I would say, you know, I think there's a difference between like likes and passions you know hobbies and whatnot mm -hmm. um and you know there are big parts of like there are different parts of me that make up me and what i'm interested in and whatnot and you know all my history and whatnot um mm -hmm. but i one thing about me is that i'm not attached to a whole lot you know there's not a lot that makes me feel invested or you know there's not a lot, whole lot of things that i like um but to specifically ask something that makes my heart go haywire or whatever um you know besides just being in love i guess is just uh being appreciated you know, I think that's the reason why I try so hard to make people happy so that they like me. You know, it's kind of sad the lengths that I go to just to try and make people like me or whatever. Um, but I think specifically to make my heart bursting, I don't know. I, I legitimately just think it's seeing other people happy, specifically people that... I like or are important to me but just seeing other people happy and even making other people happy you know there's no better feeling than to know that you are part of the reason why another person you know another life is better I think there's nothing better than a feeling like that sorry that was a long winded question <laughs> or answer rather no Good response. Great response. What about you? What's something that makes you excited, I guess, or whatever? Or drives you to do stuff? It's a very specific moment. And it's after I serve something that I make, like food-wise. And I get to share it with other people. And they also like what I made. Yeah, that's... Uh... You know, it's hard to share the things that you like with other people. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, something that they would always say is that when a guy tries to get a girl to play video games with him, uh, mm -hmm. she knows that she's, like, made that boundary because, you know, guys like video games or whatever. But I think we've sort of grown past that where girls like video games too or whatever. But anyways, the point being is that, you know, when someone likes something and then they share that with you, you know, that's like a very important thing. Even if it's something that you don't care for, I think you can at least appreciate, you know, if you actually care about the person, you should be aware and, you know, be appreciative that they are sharing something that's super important with you. Um, and I'm, I'm probably the worst at that because I I share so much like I'm very open and I don't care about most things so I'm totally fine with having like no boundaries with a lot of things but like there are some very specific things that I don't think anybody knows about not even my family that is just like super important to me that I just can't share because it's just too scary or whatever you know yeah, no, I know you're because it's like something that you hold very dear, and if you were to expose that, it it could go south or it could go really well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you, I think the fear is that you know we're always driven to negative and the positive, so it's really hard to to open up to other people in general.
Mm -hmm. I do like making. I like what? making food for other people. That's like my go-to when people are sad. I tell them to come over and I feed them. <laughs> I wish I could make food for people. I've only gotten to do that a couple of times. Oh, we've got a new person in the chat. It says error error M L. It says hoy. 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 I like how we're both on the same page with that, because that's the way that's that's how that's spelt, H O I S. Yeah. Hoy. Hoy. Ooh, ooh. And then we got the. <laughs> Why totally you didn't that? put your stream on a Discord page, Sipsty. What's a podcast? A podcast is typically just yeah. a conversation between people um, where we just sort of sit down um, and just chat, you know. It, it's one of those things where there's no, you know, there's no game. There's no end point. There's no, sometimes there is a topic. There's a point of discussion. But typically just what a podcast is, is just blatant time spent talking and discussing and spending time with people where you're literally just figuring stuff out and spending time you know i think a lot of that is what general hanging out with people sort of is you know when you're just sort of chatting chilling having casual conversation talking about nothing sometimes um which i i find difficult to do you know whenever i'm talking i always feel like i have to be discussing something or explaining something or getting to a point it's hard for me to simply talk spend time with people and just sort of it's hard for me to talk about nothing if that makes sense you know what i mean because talking about nothing is just sort of i feel like is very common amongst normal people but i i'm not good at socializing so you know, if I walk up to someone, I'm just like, okay, what's what's your favorite color? What's your age? What what's your zodiac sign? You know, you you can't it it you just can't do that. So you just gotta, you know, talk to someone, then slowly get to know them, and that sort of stuff. I need to go fill my water. I'll be right back. High five, I see. Um. What was that? But, high five, would you like to answer the question of what makes your heart pump or whatever? I know you said blood, but I wasn't sure if there was like a, a legitimate answer that you wanted to have. What sort of motivates you and keeps you interested in stuff. Also, I just noticed that I mean, that you do you want honest or no? Yeah, absolutely, I want honest. Peas and thank you. <laughs> Peas and bacon? No. One S E P gotta type it out. Alright. You uh, get you get I just noticed uh high five's status says beans are weird, man. <laughs> beans are weird. But what funny. kind of beans? There's lots of different know. kinds of beans. There's black beans, there's white beans, there's kidney beans, there's toe beans. Okay, toe beans are the best beans. <laughs> Not but to you eat. don't eat them. Not to eat. <clears throat> Chipsy. I'm allergic to beans. Makes me sad. But I don't think I'm missing too much other than farts. Um, yeah, you're not missing out on a whole lot. Except for maybe refried beans, you know, squish beans and stuff like that. Bean paste. I do love bean paste, but it hurts me so bad. 
I can't Dennis. eat seafood without getting sick. <sighs> seafood is so good. I love seafood. It's so fishy. You have to get it fresh. I think that's the difference. Like, there's a whole art to like trying to find it out and stuff. Like, I don't know. My when my aunts would take care of me, they would show me like what a fresh fish would look like. And like the fishmonger would help us too, to like help identify which ones were good fish versus bad fish. And then soon enough when I was little, like we would keep going to the fishmonger and stuff, that um eventually we would get like secret cool deals on them. It was pretty cool. I feel like America is probably not the best place to get seafood. No, you have to go to like the real seafood places. Error says, I fear lose, but I forget. I'm not sure what that means. Fear losing? Maybe? Fear of loss. Mm. That's sort of why it's hard to make connections sometimes. That's why you gotta keep making those connections, you know, keep making more. Don't give up and don't, like, stop trying to make those connections and whatnot, you know. I had a teacher always told me that 25% effort is better than 0% effort. Well, did you know that 175% uh, of all statistics are made up on the spot? <laughs> yes, but... Did you know that water is the lead source of drowning? A hundred percent of people that drink water die. Well, yes. Wait, aren't there some people who are allergic to water? Yes, and it's horrible. Like, I just... It, wow. Dang. Forty-five percent of sharks are Catholic. <laughs> Most sharks do not attend church. That's what it is. <laughs> Most sharks. Not all sharks. Most sharks. Hold on. It's Let me put this in the server. Where it memes and funny things. Sharks, they have to sleep in um in water currents otherwise they die yeah most people think that sharks don't sleep or can't sleep but actually they can um yeah. the thing is is that they have to move in order to breathe or um, rest. right or be in or resting on like where a current is so that it's mm -hmm. blowing on them you know hanging out you know like cat, cats and dogs hang out in front of fans or whatever mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Allergy it, to water is very rare, but it does exist. Yeah. They also keep growing teeth. Like, what? Oh, yeah, they keep yeah. growing teeth. Yeah. That's why their teeth are so weird like that. Um, because they just sort of grow out. And uh, they don't actually chew anything. They just sort of have this very, like, sock puppet mouth with teeth attached to it that just sort of rips through stuff and shreds it up. And that's where... It, they try to sort of swallow that. Sharks have it pretty bad. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah. It's like having triple braces on and trying to eat a hamburger. It just won't go well. Yeah. And you're a Tyrannosaurus. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, fun fact. I had to go through braces twice. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, fun fact, I'm a Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> No, I'm not cool like that, unfortunately. I had to go through braces twice because the first time, my um, my baby teeth just were messed up. Yeah, and then the second teeth. time, I had shark teeth where my permanent teeth did not mm -hmm. want to kick out. So they grew behind, so I looked like a shark. Uh, oh, man. Other Harry, than I my baby have... teeth, I've oh. never lost any teeth. My mm -hmm. jaw is off kilter it um 
it got knocked over to the side. So, like, my back molars that are supposed to be flat or whatever are actually V-shapes because they're ground into each other. Yeah. It's it's really easy to grind stuff up, though. Um, but my, my canines, you know, those sharp teeth, you know, like a vampire or whatever, the, the ones on my left side are completely ground down to just normal teeth size, but the ones on the right are still uh, pretty uh, long. Yeah, I got beat up a lot when I was young. Oh, Jesus. The thing that really makes me happy is just seeing others happy because as a person who puts others first instead of their self, people being their self is the best thing that can happen. There is so much going on in this world that if you can find one person who is willing to open up to you then you gotta stay close to that person. Just stay being yourself and that will be enough for me. True. True facts right there. You know. The only thing that you ever have to do, the only reason why you're put on this planet is to be yourself. And if you can do that, then... Honestly, you've made it farther than most of us. And that's all you have to do. And, and here's the best thing, is that... Oh, high five me, bro. Uh, Follow with me. Um, oh, where was I? Being yourself is so important because that's the only thing you have to do. And everything else you do other than that is just like extra, you know? It's all this additional stuff. It's extra credit, you know. It's all this amazing stuff. And that's why it's so important to share with other people, like, what we see in them that we like. You know, because we can never... It's hard to see in ourselves what we like, you know. That's why it's so important to, when we see other people and, you know, like them for who they are, it's important to share that with them because they wouldn't be able to know otherwise or accept it, you know. That's why we have to keep encouraging each other and whatnot. Um, but yeah, just being yourself can like really impact and help other people, which is, you know, amazing and kind of funny when you think about it. Of how like the most difficult thing should be the easiest, you know? Sorry, I'm talking a lot, so I'm like trying to stop and allow you guys to have a chance no. to say something. You're good. It kind of reminds me of like, um, you know, when you're younger and adults tell you like, oh, you do a dance for me and you do it knowing that you'll get praises and stuff. And if you try to do that again as like a teenager and adult, you're more shy about it. Does that make sense? I think if you maintain that innocence you had when you're five and you carry that confidence with you, you really go to like a, a lot of different places. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like there there's something to be said for like not caring, but also allowing yourself the freedom to be goofy and silly or mess up or be weird or wrong or you know to to try and do stuff, you know. I I feel like it's when we grow up and things are more serious, you know, like if you fail, it's going to be a, a bigger problem. Uh like as adults, we just can't mess up at our job and everything has to be serious. But we need to get back to a place where we can have a sense of humor about things and also be willing to be vulnerable or, you know, just try stuff and be weird and, you know, be funny and silly. And uh, I think it's Pablo Picasso or someone like that that says all children are artists. It's learning how to hold on to that as we grow up, you know, because the world is telling us what to do and how to think and how to feel and how to see things but children are the ones that can draw stuff and you know dance and sing and do all this creative thinking and whatnot but it's hard for you know people nowadays to do that it's the weird people that are surviving and progressing and you know succeeding in all of that good stuff It reminds me, like, a, a while ago, I used to work at a hospital, and I didn't know how to fit in, because, like, everyone had their own set of groups, 
Mm -hmm. So what I kept doing every time, like, I would come in, I would start meowing. (laughs) And, like, say weird things like, I like teapots. I'm a teapot. Pot, pot. See, that makes you a fun and interesting person to hang out with. And it was great because at first they didn't know what to do with me. But then, like, my supervisor were like, eh, at least we know she's not on drugs. Dang, I feel so young. Coma pred to you all. Oh, man. I am quite old. <laughs> I've actually legitimately started saying kids these days. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's good to, one, be yourself uh, unapologetically. But also Mm -hmm. to, like, when you don't belong or you don't fit in, that's Mm -hmm. fine. Uh, And one of the things you can do is make your own space. You know, sometimes you've got the the book club. Sometimes you've got the chess club. But sometimes you got to be the one to start the anime club, you know? Mm -hmm. Or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. So, if you are the one that can be the change that you want to see in the world and make that first step, people will come up alongside you because there are other people out there, you know. It's just they they may not have the confidence to actually step out. So if you step out first, then they'll be able to feel more comfortable and join you, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah. Spice says, Meanwhile, I also feel old around the people that are significantly younger than me. (laughs) <laughs> sips tea and feels old man um how old is spice i don't know a, vampire. a baby vampire baby vampire that is classified classified <laughs> information um i just i had my birthday a week or so ago i think i'm like 34 or something I don't remember. I don't typically celebrate my birthday. How much older am I than you? High five. Or you, Tangerine? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably the youngest out of the three of us. Really? But you're yeah, the one probably. with an actual job and a car. I don't no. have a car. No. <laughs> To be fair, that is my dad's car. My dad's car. I am the youngest. Really? No. Single digits? How old? Me? <laughs> yeah. Are you? How old are you, Tangerine, if you don't mind? Tangerine is 29. Oh, okay. So you're not that much younger than I am. No. Yep, so younger. Five. Five, five years. <coughs> I just have five boys. I'm younger. Mm, 22? No. Mm, 21? No. Am I getting warmer? Depends. What do you mean depends? Are you a shapeshifter too? Do you like age slide? No. Okay, well I try. Do you need a parent in order to buy stuff online? No. Okay. Okay, we got it. Mid twenties. Whoop whoop. No. Uh, what? Thirties? No. Forties? No. I'm Mid-20s? gonna guess somewhere around. I'm baby. Fourteen. Thirteen. Fourteen. Uh, is five a teen? No, five is less than ten. Once you're more than ten, you are in the teens. Yes, I am a teen. Okay. Uh, oh, Era asks if it's eighteen. Uh, I yeah. know how old five is, but that is also classified info. All we'll right. keep it classified. We understand she, she needs adults. That's fine. You know, that that's cool. another thing that's super important is that these things that Wait, may not mean how old I am? things that may not be important to us 
you know, can be important to other people. And so we have to be aware of that, you know, not just personal boundaries or whatever, but sometimes we can talk about things and mention stuff that means little to nothing to us, but can really impact other people. I'm one of those people that gets super upset about like some of the smallest things that most people don't even notice or realize or can just completely gloss over and, you know, be fine with. No, I don't know your age high five, but I'm I'm just just some teen, so that's okay with me. Yeah. You Be know. Cool. Be cool. I I don't like my voice, but I do know that other people like my voice. Um so most of my life I I've been mute because I tried to be invisible and was avoiding people and whatnot. So actually my you do voice have is a very voice. My oh. I have a very what voice? Oh, thank you. I do. I haven't heard that word specifically in a while. Um, people do say I have like a nice narrating voice or like a good story reading voice. Um, and I've actually been thinking about doing some of that. Buttery if you guys. Smooth. Huh, if you guys have any like books or stories that you like to have an audio book of me reading, let me know and I'll, I'll do it for you. Good night, Moon. All right. Um, let me just go find good night. You have a good moon. little Abby voice. Yeah. <sighs> um. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Because I haven't used my voice a whole lot, I I actually have bad lungs because I'm not used to projecting my voice a whole lot. Um, I have taken theater classes and whatnot, um, but because I just didn't use my voice for most of my life, it's it's kind of become a, a bit of a problem. Um, and when I do talk for long periods of time, I have to drink water constantly, which is also a problem because I have a very small bladder as well. So, um, But I, I always wanted to join like the track and field team, but I couldn't because I have bad lungs, uh, because most of my life I was just sort of an introvert, uh, sheltered person that just went and hid for most of the school life and slept my life away. Um, sorry, this is getting really depressing. <laughs> this is why I don't talk about my, my back, my background a whole lot. Um, it's all good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if anybody's interested in learning how to have a voice like mine, just don't talk for most of your life and then when you grow up you'll have like a very weird voice I don't know um, I am looking to get into voice acting though um, so I am trying to do other voices and whatnot um, but none of them have really been affecting this voice specifically and actually this is the voice that I'm most comfortable with talking at but it's actually not the voice that I usually speak at. Is it usually higher or lower? <clears throat> usually the voice that I talk at is kind of higher. Like I'm trying to portray something that I'm not. But I'm actually just trying to talk to people in a way that I think is more, you know, it's projecting a bit more. But it, it almost feels like I'm putting on a character or even... A voice to which the end that it almost has sort of uh i think everyone has a fake voice yeah mm -hmm. well there's different voices with like the way that you talk and how you talk or whatever um accent it almost has an accent i have an accent when i speak a different language no lies mm -hmm. or when i try to say things in, like other languages i've noticed myself like either go an octave higher or an octave lower depending on the language it's really weird mm -hmm. that's what I've been told by my aunts and by my friends I can actually do like a really good impression of how my voice used to sound let's see <clears throat> uh, hey guys this is sort of how I used to talk back in oh, like high school and actually not high school but middle school and before that it's kind of weird talking like this 
Oh, I sound like Saikuno or something. You know Saikuno from uh, Twitch and whatnot? Ash, is that you? Ash. <laughs> Who's I Ash? Get... Ash from what? Pokemons. Oh, man. Let's... Uh, I'm trying to think of like a good <laughs> Ash quote. Just as an adult. As an adult. Adult. All Ash. right. Let's go, Pikachu. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even going to attempt a Pikachu. I was about to, and then I was like, no. <laughs> Pika, Pika! Pikachu! No, it's the way too high. I, I can't quite hit it. Um, See, I, can I do have the... a deep voice for my age. That is all I will say. Oh, there we go. Why is he um, never get... He said that... Wah, we were... my fat! <laughs> There we go. That's a pretty good one. But I also have good vocal control. Oh, ah, cool. Yeah. That's See, I'm not. I'm not. I was gonna say a weird person. Um. There is something about like. I don't know if allure is the right way to say it, but there are some people that are like super interested and like, oh, you don't talk. I so want to hear your voice now. And it's just like. Come, like, really? Like, I don't show my face, but it's nothing special. I don't like the way that my face looks for for very specific reason. Not because I think it looks bad or whatever, but when, when pictures are taken of my face, it legitimately does not look like me. Um, and whenever there's video of me, uh, I do move my head around and do different faces and whatnot. Because yeah. my face changes drastically and is very expressive. Um, and I get that from my mother. Um, because she Ooh. can drastically change her face with just like this, the slightest change of uh, emotion. It's kind of interesting. Um, there are videos of me on my channel. Um, I did a face reveal video. Um, and it's me like turning my head around and like making all these different faces and whatnot because I'm trying to show off like how I look and whatever, whatever. Uh, oh, that sound more like Buffett you, Mike. I'm fine with my voice, but I prefer not to talk also high SPYK. Oh, I, shit. Like your best was around me out like Yeah, this. we, I, I, I saw you as soon as you <laughs> entered. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Hey, 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 a batteries, double A batteries, and then triple A batteries. He's like, ah. Uh, yeah, he's like, ah. 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 And then he just screams. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> oh my God. Beep boop, beep boop. Beep, um, beep, Spike. Beep, beep, boop. <laughs> Very good. Um, would you like to share with us, uh, your social security number, your... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Let's see. One, no, no, no. two, three, four. XYZ. X, Y, Z. Oh my goodness, you've got the numbers? You are a Zoomer. All right. Uh, the One of the main questions that I guess we've asked so far is what's, what's something that's like super important to you? I think Tangerine described it as what makes your heart full and bursting, and I sort of took that on the effect of what sort of motivates you and drives you, uh, like what sort of things are you pursuing, I suppose? Uh, might as well repeat the question, because I don't think I heard whatever the question was. What, what's, what's something that fills your heart? Uh-huh. Is that right, Tangerine? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Besides what? what? Besides yeah. Shit. You could just say love as a general answer oxygen. if you don't want. Oxygen. 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 O
oxygenated blood. I mean, that is also I mean, true. Oxygen. <laughs> I mean, it's true. That is true. Blood is oxygen. Got me there. <laughs> Air says iron. All right, fine. Now that we've got several people here, I think it's time to get into the serious questions. Such as, how how difficult do we want to start? On a scale of one to five, how difficult do we want to start? Oh, several, there is only four. Five. All right. Pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Wait, what pineapple? Yes. I mean, free food is free food. If it's offered, I don't really care. Don't it's like pizza, hee hee. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Um, there are lots of different kinds of pizza. Oh no, Forrester's like heresy. Um, what are you talking about? Nope, it's delicious. Here's what I'll say: is that there are lots of different kinds of pizza. You know, if you if you get like Boston pizza or Chicago pizza, you know, that's obviously deep like dish. the good deep dish, yeah, style deep dish or whatever. Pizza, I've never style. liked a deep dish pizza <laughs> specifically because of pot, pot, the, or the, the Pizza Hut does not have great deep dish pizza. No, 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 Good pasta, though. <laughs> they make pasta? How when did they do this? They've been doing it for a couple years now. You can get a, a box deal and whatnot. Eh? Yeah. I, uh, their know. bread is very dense. It's really... I don't know. Um, the point I'm trying to make is that there's lots of different... Kind, you know, if someone says pepperoni on pizza... Uh, most people would say obviously yes, but there's lots of different kinds of pepperoni. Um, I will I say that Domino's. while I personally do not like stuff like onions, olives, uh, you know, pineapple on pizza, I'm not saying that I I don't think it belongs on pizza. You know, there are obviously bad things like if you just have nothing but dough. In salad, you know, that's not a pizza anymore. That's, that's like, completely that's different. Right. You know, people make taco pizza. Or, you know, it's no, it's weird. And I don't know if it classifies as pizza anymore, but I'm not going to get into that. I'm just nope, saying nope. that there there is good ways to cook pineapple on pizza. I have been told. I do not personally know. I don't even like pineapple normally, pizza. though. Uh, folded pizza is the best pizza. Just don't go to South Korea for pizza because they do too many experimental things. They put corn on pizza. Oh, yeah. That, that is sacrilege and heresy. But they think it's American. Well, they're wrong. There's a it lot of things that we do over here that we think is Japanese and they do over there that they think is American that is just Ooh. wrong. I agree. So true. Mm -hmm. I had a friend that went to Thailand and they said, this is American pizza. To put ketchup all over the cheese pizza. I would actually I smack at, that I person. I will commit war crimes. I'm going to commit war crimes with those people. Okay. Calzone, just folded pizza. Folded pizza is great. Yes. Pizza sandwich. If you take two pieces of pizza and just fold it in on itself, that's the that's the way to go. I think it has I mean, to Technically, be. yes, it's calzone. Kind of. I it's will like say that pizza cookie. cakes, where it's just literally pizza stacked on top of each other, I think that's a bit much. I don't think yeah, it's too much pizza. Um, There's no such thing as too much cookie cake. Cookie cakes. Yes. I there is too much of a good thing, like yeah. oxygen. Yep, you can die. Oxygen poisoning. Too much water. Water poisoning. Mm -hmm. um, but for me personally, I don't like pineapple in general. Um, I, I don't like uh, wet and, you know, I don't like onions on pizza because that's a crunchy thing. And what I believe is a soft food. 
So I wouldn't want onions in a burrito or whatever. This is also the reason why I can't eat shepherd's pie. Because there's just too much random stuff in there that individually I would all eat. But all together, it's just no good. But I also yeah, can't eat smoothies. Want, like a thin so. crust pizza when you want that crunch. That's not really soft. Pizza but. is a soft and crunchy food depending on the crust. Right. Dude. You you can have different kinds of setups. Um, you know, even, you know, pepperoni can be crunchy or the bacon or whatever. Um, depending upon how it's cooked. You know, whatever you're trying to go for. I feel like there's a lot of different answers here. And it's all up to... Uh, interpretation and personal preference. I will say the one thing that I will get on people's cases for is if you take a pizza and open up the box and take a bottle of ranch dressing and just rip <laughs> open the top and just pour it all over the top of the pizza, that, that is pizza is ruined. That why M -M creamy? Wait, no. Huh? There are people that just take a bottle of ranch dressing and just avalanche dump it all over the pizza. Not even setting it aside to dip into, just pouring it all over the pizza. Even the crusts, you can't even handle it. That's something that you do at, at high school, you know, when the food is not edible. So you just deluge it in like all this other junk. I have I have adopted a sickening distaste towards ranch dressing because of uh, learned psychology. I've learned about this um, that you know you can teach yourself uh, an irrational fear. Um, I just whenever I'm around, if I smell, not even touch or taste it, but if I just smell ranch dressing, I just get instantly sick because of my days at school where I would try to avoid interacting with people. So what I would do is I would offer to help out in the kitchen by cleaning dishes. And every single tray that came in was just completely covered in ranch dressing. And Ew. we didn't get gloves. So it was just a, a faucet with water. And you would just stick your hand in there and wash it off with your hand in just normal water. Creamy. No soup, no nothing. Just rinse it. And just like watching the ranch slowly dissolve under the water. <laughs> oh, it's just sickening. And having to feel uh, it all over your hands. Like you just can't even wash it off. Even at the really? end. Not even with... Hold on. Well, they didn't give you soap. It was just water. So you could like feel like the weirdness all over your hand. Oh, oh wait, wait. Oh, hold on. Just... Just do the bathroom stuff, so? I mean, yes, but I was in the kitchen where the work. water's drying on your hands <laughs> as so. you're waiting around. What kind of a kitchen doesn't have soap? Well, we were That's just the, rinsing the trays before they put it in the in the industrial dishwasher. Uh, and we were just kids. I don't give a shit. What kind of schools don't have soap? Not at the specific sink that we had. I mean, obviously, they had soap over where they were working on stuff. But, yeah. you know, they don't give the bottles of soap to the kids, obviously, because they just drink it. Yeah. People do weird stuff with things. Like, that's why uh, Sudafed DM and stuff, the DM stuff, are behind the pharmacies now because kids are crazy and they learned how to separate all the drugs so that they can get high. People would sniff yeah. markers and glue. Yeah. I don't understand the glue thing. I think that's... I feel like glue is like one of the the very earliest things. That's probably what our parents did or whatnot. Sniff glue. I think nowadays it's, it's sniffing markers. Actually, nowadays, kids at school actually have drugs and sex. It's weird. Yeah. It's crazy. It is really crazy. And that's why they introduced sex ed at school. Like, we we know you're doing it, so we might as well just teach you how to do it safely. We're up to five viewers. <laughs> this yeah, is the I most stream this is the most viewers I usually freshman. have on a stream. What? Sorry, I completely what? talked over you, high five. What did you just say? I'm 
I knew someone who became a father as a freshman. Oof. Yeah. Um, That's scary. Like the mother um, was also a freshman. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. That's that's like <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, that's why it's like you gotta you gotta be careful. Be aware of your actions and what you're actually doing and like how that's gonna affect you and the rest of your life and the other person and then the other person that you've just created, you know. I don't want to even attempt to be close to having a child until I know that I have a steady job, a house, a home, you know, income. And, you know, I might just be, I don't know, very cautious and a virgin. But, you know, well, I'm not a virgin. But it wasn't by choice. Anyways, we should not talk about that on stream. Um, anyways, new topic. So, do you guys prefer chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream? Uh, I'm more of a vanilla. I also prefer vanilla. Do you like vanilla or vanilla bean? I can take either or. Vanilla ice bean. Ice cream is ice cream. <laughs> I, I used to be all about vanilla bean. Um, but just straight up soft serve, plain vanilla ice cream. I think that's just the bomb. My favorite, not gonna lie, is like the 59 cent bone from McDonald's. Yes. Yes. I'm soft serve is the way to go. Uh, with extra hot fudge. Uh. Mm. Yes. I used to didn't be into to hot fudge, but you know, it's... Again, I think it's one of those things where it's two completely separate things of hot and cold. And, well, I don't handle hot and cold very well, but, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Weird Al said it best. I love Rocky Road. Dairy cream, coca dipped cone. Yes! Oh, Wait, what dipped I cone? Dairy oh. cream. No, no, no. What, what was the other part? coca -Laid? Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid. I think it's the circle one. I can't spell it as 1 a.m. Oh. It's okay. I think it's the, um, it's, it's a really big ice cream thingy and it looks like a disc and then they dip it and then you eat it. I think. I haven't been to DQ in a while, but I used to eat after swim, like swim time. I would get uh, uh, an ice cream, the dolly thingy, the popsicle, and then I would get like a, mm -hmm. I think it was like a sloppy joe, like a sloppy joe sandwich with chips. I used to that be all the about the popsicles. <sighs> like the, uh, the, um, the starfish popsicles. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't know that Dairy Queen had food for the longest time. I thought it was just ice cream. They actually have pretty decent food. It's like not bad. Arctic Circle. Arctic Circle has has some good stuff. Do you guys know Arctic Circle? Mm, is that a coast thing? Um, typically, yes. Over here on the West Coast, I think. Um, it, it is a chain. Nope, I I'm think. Midwest. Oh, okay. Um, Arctic Silk Girl, uh, apparently, uh, I don't typically like fry sauce, but apparently Arctic Circle has one of the best fry sauces, at least on the West Coast standards. Um, they have decent fries, obviously, um, but they do have shakes, uh, which are pretty good, and I think those... My favorite. I don't know if they've changed them. They might have. Um, <laughs> Dr. Forrester says, I knew an Arctic floof. Floof. Uh, Dr. Forrester, do you want to join us in the Discord? Do you, do you... Are you a part of this Discord? I don't know. I don't think Forrester's part of my Discord, no. Uh, do you know Dr. Forrester? 
No, but I can invite them. Okay. Yeah. Do that. I think you can just post it in the chat. In the general Twitch chat. Um, or actually you can whisper it to him, I guess. Um, Dr. Forrester is a friend of goblins. Too um, much work. Too much work. Alright. Yeah, I don't care. I know Forrester. Oh, you know him? Alright. There. there you go. Um, probably from Otter's server or something. Oh. Anywho. Uh, what's everyone's favorite topping for ice cream? Miss Dance, that? actually. Huh? Oh. You guys interested in gummy bears and sprinkles? Or jimmies, excuse me. How dare I say the what? sprinkles word? What? They're called, yeah. Sprinkles are called jimmies in most of the world. Oh, okay. Like six foots? What? Six foots. Have you ever had six foots? Say that slower and pronunciate a bit more. Six. Pig slit? No! Um, S is in Sam, I is in ice cream, X is in xylophone, L is in llama, E is in A, T is in Tom, S is in Sam. Six leads. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Never heard of that before. Also, nope, hello, never. Forrester. Welcome to the... To the... Oh, we need to drag him in here, don't we? Give me a moment. Where? <laughs> Forrester just needed Jordan. Yeah, just a, a regular uh, voice channel. Woo! And then we can drag him in here. Wrong chat, SPYK. Meanwhile, I figured out how to do more things, so now I can do. Oh, Jesus, that's loud. Clap, clap. Oh, that was loud? It's not yeah. loud to me. Oh, maybe it's just me. I am on speaker. Hmm. I'm on my phone. Wait, where did the Forester guy go? Um... I mean, he hasn't joined a voice channel yet, so we haven't been able to drag him in yet. Oh, uh, okay. <clears throat> ah, sound stuff. Anywho, I like that we we started this as just a, a random hangout, and now we're just getting tons of people in here. This is great. This is what I wanted for my podcast, is just lots of people to hang out with. And it's actually all the people that are usually part of my... Oh. Where did he go? He was in the general. Did someone drag him or no? I didn't see it, so. Yeah, he was in the general chat and then he just yeah. disappeared. I think my favorite segment so far is how passionate we are about pizza. Hmm. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um. Okay. Oh, there's Dr. Forrester. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Oh, I'm alright. I usually only hang out with you on VR chat, so it's the first time I'm actually meeting Discord, I think. Indeed. Yes. You are usually part of my the my viewing audience on Twitch, so I am curious to get some feedback, I suppose. On I gotta what do you think? update your profile picture, Forrester. Oh, <laughs> what do you think of my streams in general? Hey, I mean, I find them entertaining. Definitely bring up a lot of interesting stuff to talk about. Um, I try. Do I hear a phone? Ah, sorry. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Put on a random voice changer. No way, don't. <laughs> I hate yeah, every okay. voice changer that you have. No. I absolutely hate every voice changer that you have. Do it. 
I've already done it. Alright, that one's not bad. At least that one we can understand what you're saying. What do you mean? I mean, okay. most of the time your microphone is bad enough, but then when you put a voice changer on, it's just completely impossible to understand anything that you're saying. Well, it's me, princess. I don't even know what that was, but okay. I only know that he said. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Is that you <laughs> laughing, or is that the soundboard? No, that was me laughing. I will not excuse you, princess. Oh, that's my microphone. Okay. Microphone I activated. <laughs> Sniff. Okay. Heck. Bark Bjork. Heck. That's one of the best impressions that I can do. Can I cuss? Um, typically I try to keep a pretty PG thing, but if you do like to cuss and whatnot, I won't call you out on it too hardly. Alright, just asking. That's fine. I, I'm just one of those people that uh, purposely tries not to. Um, because I, I personally feel that uh, cussing is uh, filling in for filler words and whatnot. You know, when people say like or um or whatever. When they say freaking or, you know, or whatever. You know, it's just sort of... Or it's trying to give strength to something else. You know, I feel like there are definitely other ways to speak. Um, and for the most part... Uh, cussing does offend other people, so I try to make sure to be aware of that and be more polite and nice around other people. Well, I hang out with a lot of people who don't cuss and people who cuss a lot. Mm hmm. Yeah, I understand. Um. Yeah. I just try to be aware of everyone's perspective, opinions, and feelings, um, but I'm not going to come down on you, uh, or whatever. Anywho, shall we move on to another topic? Oh, yeah, sure. before we do, Dr. Forrester, would you like to answer the first question of, uh, what's something that fills your heart? Aside from blood, oxygen, and iron. Um. Metaphorically. Mm hmm. Hmm. It's a good question. If you want some time, we can talk about other stuff. Or. Didn't mean to put you on the spot, sorry. I'd have to say friends and family. That's a good one. Yeah. Alright. How about a very, another very tough one? Milk what before the cereal. All like? What? What did High Five say? Something about fudge? Oh, what, what kind of fudge do you all like? Fudge? I thought it was going back to what What do you it's like on your ice cream? Um, are there different types of fudge? Oh, there are. There's like... Uh, there are there's... different kinds of fudge, like how there are multiple different kinds of apples, multiple different types of cheeses. Yeah, I was going to say cheeses. There are different kinds of cheeses, makes and models and whatnot. I... I, I haven't liked any fudge other than the home kind made that I've made. I feel like like the other fudges are, you know, manufactured and then they're usually packaged up and they're dry and they're weird, you know. You know, it's like we trying to eat the, Reese's we, pieces we as opposed fudge. to actual Reese's. It's just not the same. Actually, there's even some kinds of Reese's where they're individually wrapped and you just bite into them and the peanut butter is just powder. 
It's horrible. Yeah. It's like the trick or treating races oh. that you get that are horrible. What kind of place where you get powder Reese's peanut butter cups? I the hell do you it, It's from? just a thing that happens. You know, there are certain kinds of Reese's that just don't survive i don't know why this is why i like to buy the reese's bars the the candy bar the reese's candy bar where it breaks apart into pieces like a like a hershey's chocolate bar but it's just like squares that's got peanut butter inside it's the best peanut butter the reese's peanut butter in my opinion and it's a better chocolate to peanut butter ratio i think why don't know something interesting what Canada has Reese's peanut butter cups in packs of three as their regular size. Huh. Whereas in America, it comes in packs of two. That's a better deal. Yes, it is. Kind of an odd number, though. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, we're a little off topic, though. Did anyone else have a preference on fudge? I like peanut butter fudge. I mean, yeah, peanut butter fudge is good. Although, interesting fudge-related story. Um, real quick, my mom made Christmas fudge one year, and um, I ate a bunch of it, and then I, I just had enough, and I still had a piece of fudge, and I had this tool, tote thing, that I used to store a lot of stuff in. So I put a piece of fudge in one of the empty containers on the top that kind of popped out of the lid. And it stayed there for years. <laughs> and it didn't it didn't mold, it didn't get nasty looking, it just got light colored and very hard. At least you know it was made with no contaminants. Um actually bacteria have a very hard time when they have lots of sugar. I don't know why, but it happens, so that's a good stuff. That's a good sign. Good. Nice. Cool. And we didn't try eating it, of course, because it was like a rock at that point, but uh, it's my lucky fudge. I had that thing for like a decade. Lucky fudge. <laughs> Is fudge sticks a thing? Yeah, I don't like it, though. It feels like a, like a, a, a thing stick? that parents would say, like, ah, oh, fudge sticks. Oh, fuddy yeah. duddy. Um, oh, what's the weird, uh, Little Debbie's bar? Bowls? No. no that's what's... It's no, like that's... the, it's like the, not Snickers bar thing. Mm. Twinkies? Nutty Buddy. Oh. Oh, I haven't had Nutty Buddies. I hate those. <laughs> Wait, why do you don't like Nutty Buddies? What's wrong with Nutty Buddies? Uh, it, like I said, I don't like weird things that are a combination of things. This is why I don't like Twix. I don't like Snickers. You know, what, what? it is is that the wafer, I don't like the wafer. And then when it's covered in like a very thin layer of chocolate that just kind of flakes and kind of melts, it's weird and tastes weird. When, when it like melts and whatnot. And then it's got like that weird, f very fake, like peanut butter or whatever in the middle that uh, just makes me sick. I'm sorry. I don't like a lot of candy or like fake food. Uh, the only thing I do like is gummies and taffies. Just because I'm more of textures than a uh, flavors guy. I'm kind of weird. Mm. Uh, so airheads, that's that's probably a good one for me. Mm. All right, dead silence. Cool. I th <laughs> thought we'd like st to transition into oh, what's our favorite candy and whatnot, but no, that's oh, fine. I know what I know what I can I know what we could talk about. Oh no. What? I don't know yet. What fruit do you hate the most? Ah, uh, pears. Ooh. They are just watered-down, grainy apples. What? I hate yeah. pears. I like pears. You know, I don't, I don't really know if there is a fruit that I actually hate. 
I'd have to I'd have to think about that for a long time. I don't like oranges and tangerines and grapefruits because how do you even eat that? That's just like a whole bunch of skin. You like bite into it and then it just bursts and then you got juice and then like all these seeds to try and eat and it's just oh it's gross. Peas and blueberries are the exact same thing to me that you just bite into it and it's juice and skin <laughs> that you have to chew on. I hate it. Again, I don't... nothing to do with taste. All I eat is about textures, and that's why I eat nothing but carbohydrates like noodles, rice, graham crackers, cereal, bread. That's all I eat. I just can't handle these weird, gross, gooey stuff. So, um, wait. Peas are a fruit? No, I was saying that blueberries and peas are the same thing to me. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't like grapes. I, was say, I don't I was, like berries. I was about to say my entire life was a lie if, if I found out peas were actually uh, a Tomatoes fruit. are a fruit. Yes. Yeah. Hand fruit. Woo woo. But they're taxed as a vegetable. Well, it's because they're not sweet and they're, you know, whatever. Uh, I used to like cherries when I was young, but I think that's because we always put them in cherry coke, and I think I just liked cherry coke. Because I, I, I like. Never a huge fan of cherries, but yeah. I don't dislike them. Durian. Just one of those things where it's like, eh, you know, take durian it. Durian is it. more of an acquired taste. You like durian? Well, once you bypass a weird bitter taste, weird, awful, an awful smelling smell. You, you have that hint of sweetness. That I've never actually tried one, but I I think I probably wouldn't like it. No. I know I wouldn't one. like dragon fruit. I like dragon fruit. That Anything that you bite fruit. into that just has tons of juice, and then you're just kind of chewing on like this pulpy like meat it's wait. no good wait dragon fruit yeah there's different kinds of dragon fruit eh? yeah like do you know there's a difference between pink and orange dragon fruit well dragon what? fruit is more of a, a solid thing um i thought you just cut it in half and eat it yeah, yeah, yeah. you do but but they have the, the, with the different colors comes with different tastes I think yeah, dragon I think fruit's like, more like a kiwi than anything yeah. else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a kiwi. Uh, between the two, um, I think I prefer the orange dragon fruit. I know there is this the one orange. weird fruit. I don't know what it's called. And it smells like rotting flesh. Um, but when you that's open it, it tastes no, that's, super that's good. Durian. That's, that's durian. durian. Yeah. I just know that it's got like, you, you basically scoop it out like... Like a freaking, uh... Ice cream. Uh, uh, no, I'm, uh, pumpkin. There's just, like, all I'm the not, flesh uh, of a pumpkin. Scary. You're just scooping it out, and then you just eat that. Oh, it, oh, it's making me sick thinking about it. It's durian. I, I don't like that. That sounds like durian. I don't like I used to like watermelon. <laughs> I just can't, I can't eat watermelon now. Because it's just a uh, weird texture, and then it's just tons of juice, you know? Well, that, it's like that eating uh, uh, popsicle. You guys ever had, like, an otter pop? What is that? Otter pop is this, uh, this juice that gets frozen, um, but it's more like one of those s snow cones that you get, where it's ice, and then they sprinkle juice on it. So when you eat an otter pop, you're mostly just chewing on an ice cube, and then the flavor juice is at the bottom. So you kind of have to suck on it while you're chewing on it, like a like a gogurt. Because if you just suck all of the juice out, then you're just eating it, uh, <laughs> uh, an ice cube. Nope, 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 nope. Hmm. Goodness, I go off on tangents too much. I apologize. <laughs> does, anything, does anyone have anything they want to say? 
Um, Forrester, do you want to talk about your opinion on pizza? <laughs> Hearing this out of context will be interesting. Mm. Yeah, out of context, that entire segment is just so weird. It's just like, what, it's what, what are they talking well, about? Well, um, anytime talking about eating food, that can be, you know, weird. Yeah, um, as for pizza. So, um, I, uh, I'm, a, I'm firmly in the no pineapple camp. Well, I just um, don't like pineapple in general. I don't mind pineapple, like, when it's by itself. But it's not something I'll, like, I'll be like, oh, pineapple, I need to eat some. Just not, not, um, not a big part of what I look forward to eating in my daily, um, Yeah. Pineapple just tastes like squishy cucumber. I like mangoes. Nobody asked. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was like trying <laughs> to, to delve into like the mean side of like uh, I just can't even do it for as a joke. I'm uh, sorry. Did I no, hurt your feelings? Good. Uh, I don't know if I've ever had a mango. Uh, they're my favorite. I have I think a lot of reasons why I like different kinds of foods because I have a specific memory to it. So when I was younger, my grandma would make like a very sweet rice porridge and then she would top it with the ripest mangoes on earth. So it'd be like super fruity and super sweet that would complement something that's usually muted. And it was delicious. And that would literally be my dinner. And I'd be happy as a plant. And I'd be like, okay, I'm good, bye. Okay. You guys ever had breakfast rice? Eh? Maybe you guys <laughs> are, are too young to know about this. There's this thing that you can do with, if you, you guys know how to cook rice and whatnot, and how to get like sticky rice and whatnot. Uh -huh. um, if you just have plain white rice, uh -huh. you know, cooked up and whatnot, you put cinnamon sugar on it. You know oh. what cinnamon sugar is, right? Uh -huh. It's literally just cinnamon and sugar mixed together and you put it on toast and whatnot. But if you just put that on rice and have it with a little bit of milk, that's what breakfast rice is. Mm. And my mom loves it. It sounds like a rice that my aunts make. <clears throat> There's something oh. interesting about having like the very dry rice with the, the wet milk. Um, and then you just have sort of the cinnamon sugar on it to give it a little bit of flavor and whatnot. So is it like rice pudding? Uh, no. You just sort of have, uh, oh, here's He's my mom. selling me out. No, we're just talking about <laughs> breakfast rice. You like breakfast rice, right? Yeah. A little half and half and cinnamon sugar or plain old rice. And oh, you have it with half and half. A little dash of vanilla. Oh, vanilla. And sometimes just a touch of nutmeg. Nutmeg, that's what it is. Magnifico. Magnifico. That's what, the, for those of you who don't know, nutmeg is like that very specific spice. Um, you'd probably recognize it from French toast or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I like nutmeg. I like you. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I am that person that's like, my favorite color is blue. Like, you're blue. It's like, oh. Should we leave you two alone? No. <laughs> um, I think we can move on to the next topic. Uh, unless anybody else has one thing they want to say. I'm like, I feel like I need to be the one that has to take charge. But I'm also like the one person that's talking way too much. And should be giving other people opportunities to talk instead. <laughs> um, we could get into a serious discussion about something if we really wanted to. But I don't know. I feel like some of these questions are fun. We could just sort of keep going with that. Um, What's your guys' yeah. opinion on the Third Amendment? No. 
Um, oh, I, I did ask uh, briefly uh, what's people's opinion on milk before the cereal? I mean, I always put the cereal first, so... Um, I mean, I'm not one of these people who's going to look at you like you have three heads if you um, put the milk in first. I just a little off I, I when I was young I was sort of I guess taught to put the milk before the cereal um, and so I guess I'm sort of used to that and the way that I do it is that Why before the, <laughs> uh, I don't remember um, but I would pour the milk and then just pour cereal in it then eat the milk and cereal and then I, the milk would be a little bit lower, so I'd probably finish it off with, like, a little bit more cereal. Um, and I like a lot of milk to cereal, uh, so much to the point that I probably would uh, prefer to, you know, get more scoops of milk when I have cereal. Again, it sort of depends on the cereal. You know, if you have something, like, uh, very solid, like Kicks or Cocoa Puffs, you know, where... You know, it does not uh, dissolve very quickly. Um, I feel like you can do either or. But with something like Life or Raisin Bran or just Bran Flakes or whatever, like Frosted Flakes or Fruity Pebbles or Cocoa Pebbles, you know, if you if you have just a ton of that and then you just pour milk over it, it just instantly dissolves and stays on the bottom and you just can't get to it. That's why I feel like it's important to have some milk, not like a full bowl. Uh, I actually like having, we have these bowl plates that are like very shallow but wide bowls. Um, and I think that sort of helps you find uh, the cereal if it like f falls, it stops floating basically. Um, it helps you find it pretty quickly. So I, I, to me it sort of depends on what cereal you're eating, I think. Um, I will say that recently, because I've been going uh, into work, I've had to take uh, just like a Tupperware container of cereal, and then I've got a thermos of milk, and I just sort of pour that over the top, and that sort of made me choose and decide what cereal I'm going to take, because obviously I wouldn't take Raisin Bran, because uh, that would just dissolve instantly and not be good, but I, I take other stuff like Honeycomb cereal or Cheerios or Kicks or whatever. Because it can sort of take the milk. Does okay. anyone have any opinions? <laughs> or am I just going to be the one that's like, this is my whole life experience on this? <laughs> I grew up not eating cereal. Oh, um, I'm a big cereal person. No, I have cereal I every day. Like, no, cereal's a snack to me. So I, I take like a little handful of of cereal and then I sip on my milk with the straw because it has to be with the straw I don't know why but that's drinking how stuff with a straw is fine yeah I have a turn uh, I will say that uh, hi welcome back um, uh, I, I have sort of when I'm on the road you know I'm not driving obviously um, but you know you can't just like pour milk into a bowl because it'll just splash out so I will, like, eat bites, like, spoonfuls of plain mm -hmm. cereal and then drink a little milk. And it's very weird. And it's definitely not the same. Um, but I, I have experienced that somewhat. Yeah. Um, like, some people have milk with their Oreos. Um, they just drink some milk while they're eating or whatever. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a person that has to dunk Oreos. That's just the best way to eat them. I didn't used to be a person that would dunk, uh, cookies into milk, but specifically Oreos have to be dunked. That's just... If the boy has to be dunked, it's great. When, when the, when the cookie just gets just soft, yes. oh, that's yeah. the best. I just don't like how Oreo just sticks to my teeth. That's why I dunk it. Nowadays. I can't understand what you said. I don't like how Oreos stick to my teeth when I eat them dry. So I like it. Yeah. 
when yeah. I dunk the cookie first and then eat it. Uh, we uh, we get the we we used to like it. Um, if you get the bulk box from Costco, those Oreos taste different. Um, yeah, specifically they do. They the, have the a cookies. different. They have like a different like hmm. processed flavor to them. It's yeah, it, it's not weird. the cream though; it's the cookie. Yeah. Also, the people that like scoop out the cream and just like completely set it aside and get like a cup of just cream and then bite into that, you people are weird. <laughs> people do that. Uh, like the cream is good and all, but it it's not the same without yeah. You know, it's like getting Lucky Charms but it's just the marshmallows, you know. The reason why the marshmallows are good is because you have it with the cereal. You know, if you just have just a package of just marshmallows, that's going to get old real quick. Food is well, food. excuse me for being weird, okay? No, no, no. Food I I am absolutely <laughs> the person that would pour a bowl of milk, pull Lucky Charms, eat just the cereal, pull pour more Lucky Charms, eat just the cereal, until I just had a bowl of just marshmallows at the very bottom with no milk left and just eat that. I am that person. Well, I was that person that would scrape, well, not technically scrape, but I would layer the, the, the filling of Oreos so it was like a large cylindrical cake and just after I just eat the cookies, I would just eat the cream. That was like years ago. I like to I like to double them up, so I would take two two Oreos, uh, pop pop the sides off of one uh, one side of them, and take the two and put the cream together. So I'd have a double stuff Oreo, um, but then I would have to eat the cookies and whatever. And you know that feels like a chore, which is like <laughs> the mindset of just a child, obviously, but like. <laughs> That that's the biggest, um, and obviously double stuffed Oreos that come packaged as double stuff are not double stuffed. They're like, like five quarters stuffed. You know, that's not twice as many. I used to be a fan of like the double stuffed and mega stuffed Oreos as a kid, but nowadays I'm more a fan of the thin style Oreos. Uh... I feel like. I feel like the thin style Oreos taste different, and that's the sort of reason that I like them. Um, also, going back to, there are some Oreos that you can get where it's just the cookies and the cream, like they're completely separate, and they taste completely different. Specifically, the cream tastes nothing like the normal cream that's inside of the Oreos. Oh, of course it doesn't. It, it tastes like... It's, it's like a different legit. consistency too. It's weird. Fun fact: You can buy a five-pound bag of gummy bears. Oh yeah. That's a lot of gummy bears. I mean, Why you can I... buy five-pound bags of just about anything. Why gummy bears, though? I mean, you can buy a five-pound bag of just the marshmallows from Lucky Charms. Marshmallow really? mateys. Yep. Why would you do that? That's like sugar, man. Yeah, it's dehydrated marshmallows. Okay. You can get a three-pound gummy worm. Mm-hmm. It's you can just it's <laughs> technically like the world's largest gummy worm. It's you just three you just swallow it down and make it do battle with your tapeworm. Welcome it's, to America. <laughs> it's three pounds of sugar and forty with forty thousand calories. Oh Jesus. And it's like Could do tapeworm, you're about to have diabetes. Mm -hmm. that, that's the real, just that's how you kill you. it. That's how you kill the tapeworm. You know, tapeworm is just tapeworm. a pet that you, you uh, have Brutus. to feed mandatory. It's like the one pet that you can't kill. I mean, my ex got me a three pound gummy bear before. Wow. Hi, Cine QB. Today oh, we have uh, a key light be like, oh, I can't I? <laughs> oh, no, it's not that. It's an OP packing so he can. Bree, 
Amaranth. <laughs> Spare me. Suffering Sparrow. Spare me. I remember the first time. I, I have this in one of my Overwatch videos that I was in a Discord group with some people. And apparently there was a bot that could play YouTube video audio, which normally is for music. But they played that video and it just popped into the Discord channel, and I had no idea what was going on because this is the first time I've ever met a bot on Discord. So I thought this was an actual person, and I was freaking out trying to talk to them, like, Who are you? What's going on? <laughs> oh, stop it. oh my stop goodness. It. It's so funny. And well... The, uh, the bots are actually AI. It's like we have convinced the human we are live. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know that Discord had bots that could do stuff like that. Bruh. Well, obviously I do now because I use them in my Discord games. Or my D&D my &D games on Discord. I play music. <laughs> Woo! Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I was um, never able to describe what, what food I hid because I got pulled away from the side. Hmm? I think there's I more... I think there's it's more vegetables story. than I like than fruits. But yeah, I hate watermelons with a passion. Watermelon? No, it's not because of the meat. It's because of a... Uh, because of, because back in Halloween, like 20 ish. When you get ago, seedless watermelon and it has seeds? No, 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 no. <laughs> there was a, it was an extremely sour warhead that was watermelon flavored. Oh, and of course, so those things imagine. don't taste like watermelon. You get like so grape flavored something and it does not taste like grapes. It's just, it's. Yeah, that's just sugar. It, it's purple flavor. It's just sugar. Yeah. But anyway. I was like, ooh, cool new candy. I don't know what this tastes like. And so I just ooh, popped the candy. warhead into my mouth and, and swallow it. And then like, oh. a couple minutes later, I was like on the toilet with, with bowel problems for half an hour. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> banana so. flavors don't taste like banana. <laughs> so, no, banana flavors on, are the worst. But, but yeah, from that point on, each time I see a watermelon, I... I my body just goes into panic, panic mode. <laughs> Literal panic mode. If I smell watermelon, I will get migraines. I wow. will get full on migraines. My ah. I can't handle watermelon wow. at all. I've been trying my best. Yeah, that's like to, my learned fear of uh, ranch dressing. It just like makes and, me sick. I've wow. been trying my best to overcome it, but literally to no avail it's a yes it's a psychological thing my parents have told me but I, you just I look at a five foot wide, wide watermelon just... like i'm so afraid of swallowing that you know the thing like the the doctor oh, what was it the doctor Susan from from the grinch i wouldn't touch a watermelon even with a 39 and a half foot pole mm. that, mr that grinch know. I wouldn't okay. touch you with a 39 and a half foot pole. Yeah, no, no to watermelons. Also, about the cereal thing. Anyone remember when cereal straws used to be a thing? Oh my goodness. Ah, oh, those were the <laughs> worst. I, I do. Those suck. I, um. They tasted I, so I, I never. Aren't I they never supposed to be the... coming back? Yeah, what? they are. What's yeah. the thing that they're based off of? Isn't there like a uh, a churro like the uh, it's it's like the straw thing, you know, like it's the wafer that you eat, but there's like different flavors of like it's sort of like a pocky thing, but it's I mean it's not pocky obviously. But it's it it's these it's these straw things like I don't know. There's I have no idea what they're called, but they're before cereal straws were a thing, there was this actual food thing. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, hang on, I'm looking for it. 
uh, pirouettes. Pirouettes? Mm-hmm. Pirouette cookies? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. about flavors? Yeah, that's what milk? it is. Oh, yeah, I flavors? hate those. They're so I gross. As a child, I used to like the, the cereal straws. Then I got sad when they discontinued them. I'm like, why? The the cereal bars, like the, uh, um, you know, how you can get. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's like, cere like new yeah. cereal, but it's like in a weird bar shape. Yeah, it I like those. Bar, those though. were all right. For me, it really depended on the bar because some bars were made in a way that, yeah, this actually tastes like the cereal. I like it. And then there's true. some bars that were just Very like. True. What the hell? Did Honey I Nut Cheerios tasted into? very sweet when they're in the bar for whatever reason. However, Fruit Loops were just the same. I don't think there's any difference between the, the Fruit Loops things and all of the products. They really like had a consistency with the taste. Hmm. <laughs> um <laughs> yeah i was gonna say does anyone else have they, anything they gotta because i i've got a very small list of things that we could talk about but i wasn't sure if anyone else had anything pulled pulled up or they wanted to ask and talk about we mostly have been talking about food this entire time. Do you want to talk about butts? All right. Let's talk about butts. What kind of butts do you like? Not butts. Books. Oh. Well. <laughs> well, as, as, um, as Sir mix -a -Lot once put it. I like big books, and I cannot lie. I used to read a lot when I was young. Um, I feel like that's the reason why I actually learned. Um, I, I think I'm very much more of a visual learner. You know, a after school, I would go home and reread the material and teach myself, basically, because I couldn't learn anything in class. Um, and I read a lot of novels when I was a lot of novels, like an insane amount. And I think that's why I've sort of got the vocabulary that I have now. Um, and so I'm always interested in like finding and being? learning new words. That's why this podcast is called the Expound Podcast, uh, because expound is a fun word that I discovered when I was very young, um, and I was for a short time a grammar Nazi because you know you don't say sorry because sorry means that you you know you apologize and you're never ever going to do it again. But I feel like sorry is just a, a shorter and informal way of, you know, saying that you did not mean to do that or whatever. It's like saying my bad or whatever. Uh, so sometimes you just got to learn to go with the flow and, you know, when in Rome, speak like the Romans or whatever, you know, different things mean different things. And that's another thing that I really want to get into is words and what they mean, you know, the words that kids use these days and all that good stuff but we're getting off topic about novels or books specifically does anyone have anything they want to say about books i want to know what was the one book or series that you read had the biggest impact on you as a child moving on to an adult hmm none because i never really read books as a child yeah Um, hmm, that's a tough call. I've got a few that I could mention. Uh, does anyone else want to go first, though? I was more into video games when I Well, I am going to go ladder you all. Okay, bye-bye. Um, uh, bye. Yeah, I never really read books as a kid. Ever since um, I, I was seven, I was introduced to a Game Boy, so I never really played books. Yeah, I, I didn't really get uh, video games until 
like almost high school. So. Dang. Um, I will say that elementary school, uh, we did have the very first game console with the very first uh, Mario. So that was cool. Oh, and also had Doug Hunt, but, you know. Um, there was a very cool uh, thing. It was like this. Um, it wasn't uh, uh, like a a game cabinet. It was not a game cabinet, but it was this setup where it was a TV set or like built into uh, this thing that was attached to uh, like a pedaling machine. So you would lean, you would sit on it and sort of lean back a little bit and you would pedal on it and you could steer it. Um, and it was sort of like an exercise machine, but it was hooked up to a game. Um, and basically the game was that you were driving this bike around and it looked like Tron bikes. Like when you would drive past someone else who was playing next to you, because we had two, um, but there was also AI. Uh, it looked like Tron bikes. Um or something very similar anyways. Um, and I really want to figure out what it is because I really want to get one because uh, it was just a lot of fun, uh, especially because it would go as fast as you would pedal. So people could like pedal really fast and just like get up to speed and then go off ramps, which you weren't supposed to do. Um, it was very weird. It, it was set in like a, a snow theme, which is the weirdest thing because you don't ride your bike in the snow. <laughs> Um, but I've been looking for it and I can't find it or figure it out. Uh, anywho, going back to books. <laughs> <laughs> so, so books that, uh, impact on childhood, huh? That was, that was the question? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. I got one for here. Okay, so there was a book that came out in the 90s by Richard Preston called The Hot Zone. Now, I didn't read the book first. My, my dad had gone to a bookstore. He had seen it. The cover intrigued him. And he paged through the first chapter, and it left an indelible mark on his mind. And he felt that he needed to share what he had learned in the first chapter of this book. But he didn't know... He didn't have all the details down. He, you know, he, he remembered bits and pieces of chapter one. So here's little me eating my chicken tendies, hearing about this hideous disease in Africa that, like, people are literally melting, you know, you know, and, and, and bio suits don't help. And, and, and it's just this, this horrible doomsday scenario. And, and the, the worst part about it is it was, it was nonfiction. It's all real. It's there. And I'm, of course... I'm a little kid, so now I'm sitting there thinking, we're all gonna die, because eventually someone will get it and bring it here, and there'll be people like melting, and there'll be blood everywhere, and just be horrible. So I got traumatized at hand by this book. High school comes around, and the school library has a copy. And I'm like, all right, I'm gonna find out for myself what this is all about. And so I read the entire thing. And yeah, it was, a, it was about Ebola and a very similar virus called Marburg hemorrhagic fever. And yeah, I mean, it's nasty stuff, but it was nothing like what my dad had described. So I'm like, okay, it's not that bad. Well, I decide I'm going to regale some kids at the table I'm sitting at. Sorry. And so I tell them this little bit that I told you guys. And they're like, oh, haha, that's cool. I'm like... I mean, here, check this out. So I read them the first chapter of the of the book. And they're all like, that, that's horrible. Don't ever read that again. It was a mistake. They, they told me that, and I'm like, oh, really? Because anytime somebody else would sit at the table, I'd be like, hey, there's a book you should know about. And I would go, and I would start reading the first chapter. And um, one poor girl, um, she didn't even get to the good part. She's just like, I can't. I'm getting lightheaded. I'm like... I haven't even got to the part where you like, you're like, no, no, just stop. So one day, I'm in the library. I'm going to get a different book. Um, and I get up, and I went to the bookcases. 
And I don't even remember what. I was looking for like a, a, a medical book on something else. And I turn around and my table's empty. Like, where the heck did everybody go? And so I around this little waist high bookshelf that kind of separated the tables um, from the walkway by the librarian desk. And they're all literally on their hands and knees, crawling away from the table so that they don't have to hear me read the first chapter of this book over again. <laughs> and I just started laughing. And the, li- the guy in the library, Mr. Waters, was like, <clears throat> Gentlemen, get back to the table. And I'm like, no, he's going to read from us the book, and it's horrible. We're going to throw up everywhere. I'm like, guys, I don't even have the book. See? This is spontaneous human combustion. It's a different book completely. But, yeah, so I got to spread my trauma. <laughs> wow. What that book was, was wow. it? It was called The Hot Zone. Oh, that's the right. Hot... Okay. The great thing is, is, of course, being teenagers, everybody who saw it was like, The Hot Zone? Oh, my, what are you reading? You reading some uh, dirty novels? I'm like, oh, yeah, the dirtiest here. Let's see how hot The Hot Zone gets, huh? And then a 1994 the... nonfiction thriller. Goodness. Yeah, so they they would always think I'm about to read them some horrible smut or something like that, and then I'd read about dude basically disintegrating from the inside out, and they they would never want to read have me have me read anything again. It was a one trick pony, and a one shot wonder, but it did wonders for me anyway, because I thought it was hilarious. Um, Preston actually, um, he's done other books. Um, he had an actual fictional novel called The Cobra Event, which scared Bill Clinton so much that he actually had a bunch of people come in and be like, now, the situation in this book, could it really happen? And when he said, well, yes, Mr. President, he, he, he made up a task force to investigate the possibility of bioterrorism attacks on the U.S., um, and then he had one called Demon in the Freezer about smallpox. Um, and after reading that book, I, I firmly came to the belief that I would much rather live in a world rife with Ebola than a world where smallpox made a return. Because that's nasty. I don't want to deal with that stuff. Mm. That would. Thank you. <laughs> that reminds me, I don't know where my copy of the hot zone is. Um, the only actual like novel I have out right now is The Stand. trying to think of books like this whole time and I was I finally remember what the book series I like, the one book series that I was actually investing in yeah. you're cutting in and out ah shit <laughs> here we go again now I can hear you Man, there's this one book series I do remember it's when you talk quiet that I think the voice recognition is having a hard time yeah I know it's kind of hard. Again, I need to get a better mic somehow, but I can't get. <laughs> Anywho, book series I do remember like actually being invested in, and probably the only one I probably thought of the name was called Pen Dragon. It's like this. What was it? This teenage guy who goes off into other worlds like an isekai and just saves them from this one dude. Oh yeah. And there were supposed to be like. 10 books in this series, but I only went up to book 7 or 8. I don't remember, it's been too long ago. Hmm. Yeah, there was there were different worlds, like, there was, there was one where, like, it was in the future, there was one where there was, like, in a forest village, one back in the times before the Hindenburg disaster, and the, the water world, was it Sapnaka? Things like that. But I never went past book seven. I don't know what caused me to drop the series at all, but I dropped it. 
And then when I wanted to go back to it, like I tried to go to like a Barnes and Noble, and I couldn't find the series anymore. I'm like, fuck. There's probably ebooks for it. I don't have the ebook technology for that. Book. Nice. Nice. I have two books. I liked when I was growing up. But they're both fantasy, so I guess that speaks volumes to like my favorite stuff. <laughs> the first one is called The Hero and the Crown. It's by a woman named Robin McKinley. And it's pretty much this this little girl, teenage girl, that like gets ostracized by the village because she's weird. And they think her mom is a witch and stuff. But she's actually pretty resourceful. And then she ends up, she kind of like Naruto's herself into being liked by everyone in the village and all that jazz. And she's able to, like, I guess, come to terms with how unique she is in a way. And, like, um, and encourage others to follow suit. If that makes sense. So I always hmm. feel like her, in a way, to embrace what we and then impart it to other people. So, yeah. Um, I guess I have a couple picks. Um, but specifically things that really impacted me. Um, I do remember that there's there's like been several like kid books that I think uh, helped shape me a little bit. Um, you know, obviously stuff like Dr. Seuss uh, or Berenstain Bears or all that good stuff, Tintin and you know. Um, I do remember that when uh, life was hard and my parents were you know, uh, I was babysitted by this one guy that I think he really shaped my life. You know, he's the one that got me into video games and fantasy and Star Wars and Star Trek, uh, um, and Legos and, you know, all that good stuff. He let me play Star Fox and he actually got me into Bionicles too, I think, and whatnot. Um, he, he read three books uh to me one was uh it wasn't cloudy with a chance of meatballs it was the sequel it was like pickles from pittsburgh uh it was like the after you know all the 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 food landed they had to like hide it you know because we live in a normal society now and whatnot uh so they would talk about this strange new land or whatever where all the stuff is hidden whatever uh, so that that was an interesting one. There was also one by, like, the very same author that was about this guy who kept losing things. Like, he would always lose his wallet or his money or whatever. But one day he woke up and he was missing his head. And then his wife, like, kicked him out of the house and divorced him. Like, all this bad stuff started happening to him. And he would fall down a sewer drain. Uh, not because he couldn't see, but just, like, bad stuff was happening to him. And then uh, I think he grabbed a sack and, like, put it on his head to, you know, make people not hate him so much. Uh, it was very strange. Um, and I think it was sort of that that kind of brought into the tie of, like, you know, it doesn't matter how bad, you know, your life is. People are just still going to hate you or whatever. Um... <laughs> Other than that, I think in the way of like other novels and series, uh, I think a good one was How to Disappear Forever and Never Be Found. That's that's a pretty good pick. Um, also, Ranger's Apprentice series was uh, a really good series that I'd probably recommend to uh, most people. Uh, and it was actually good through like the first five or six books and didn't get bad you know immediately I feel like in most book series they get the first one and it's alright and then the second one sometimes that's good and 
sometimes even a little better, but by the time they get to the the next books, they're just trying to stretch it out, and it's nothing the same whatever. ever. Um, uh, that happened with So You Want to Be a Wizard. The first book was fantastic. The second one was okay, and then after that, I just l completely lost interest. Um, as for books that sort of helped shape my life, or sort of define me, um, I don't know if you guys have read... Did you have to read uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower at school? Yeah. No. No, no I did sort of... not. That's a, that's a book that perfectly describes my life and who I am. Um, it didn't define me, but it was like almost scary, like how spot on that it was. Like it was describing my life. Like I was that main character. It was... It's kind of scary. So if you're interested in knowing who I am, go ahead and read that book, I suppose. Uh, it's not a bad book. Uh, it, it's nothing like, you know, Fahrenheit 451 or whatever. You know, that's a decent book. Mainly the point of Fahrenheit 451 is that the future is weird and, you know, free will and, you know, m knowing uh, art and whatnot. So, you really don't have to read Fahrenheit 451. Just read the Cliff Notes and or Spark Notes or whatever, and you you'll get the gist of it. Because uh, it it was a very weirdly written book and kind of kind of badly written, to be perfectly honest. Um, along with uh, Catcher in the Rye, you know that was also a very. Oh, weird one. Anyways, the I'm rye. I'm going off topic. Um, I can't think of any like specific book that helped shape my life i do know that ender's game was a very very good book that uh i actually uh didn't know about and like wasn't offered someone was reading it at uh, a book camp uh and suggest uh said hey i'm in the middle of reading it but for you guys to go to bed on time, I'll read you some from where I'm at. And I was like, that's very dumb. And so he would read some of it, and it didn't make any sense. So I was like, but this sounds kind of interesting, so maybe I'll read it later. Um, so Ender's Game is probably a good one. Um, and that probably did, you know, change uh, or help shape me, I guess, a little bit. Um, other than that, I think the last thing that I'll end off is an absolutely insane book called Peter Pan in Scarlet and it's a story of what happens uh, after the original story of Peter Pan when all the, the, the kids and the lost boys go back home to live in London uh, and Peter Pan is still in Netherland and stuff is going bad and it's, it's almost a trippy book uh, like even worse than uh, Inception or whatever. Um, and it's very it's very well written. Um, it's very much for older audience. I, I would say still young adult, uh, but you know more than just children. I mean obviously it's a novel. Uh, but yeah, I highly highly recommend uh, Peter Pan and Scarlet for anyone who's just interested in a good book read. Because I'm sure everyone's sort of known the story of Peter Pan, so if you're looking for uh, a little bit more of that action or something a little bit more edgy, right? I, edgy's not a great word, but like very, very cool, and you know, it's where the uh, the adults have you know lived through their lives, but then they start having dreams about Netherland, uh, like stuff starts coming through their dreams of like there's there's some seashells or there's there's a smoke pipe or a hatchet you know some something from the indians sometimes there's a hook and then it gets so bad that the act the crocodile like appears in one of the rooms one time so they meet up and realize that they have to go back to netherland and see what's the problem is so they take their children's clothes and get inside of them because you know when you play dress up you are a child pretending to be an adult, so the only way for an adult to be a child is to wear their children's clothes. Uh, and then they fly back to Netherland, 
and then they find Peter Pan, and there's stuff going on, but he won't talk to them. It's almost like a Cheshire Cat sort of scenario, where he's like, uh, I, I will tell you, but you have to help me out, and then they go, I don't want to tell you like the whole plot and whatever. Um, but yeah, they basically go on another adventure, and it's really good. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Anywho, uh, we have been going for about two hours, which is typically how long I do a uh, uh, a podcast. But what about you guys? Do you want to go for much longer? I probably need to head to bed. Yeah, I should head to bed too. It's 12, which means I'm probably going to be sick tomorrow. Because I'm not used to staying up this late. <laughs> All right. I will close us out by reading an excerpt of Goodnight Moon for everybody. How's that sound? Yeah. Works for me. <clears throat> hey. Um, I forgot that this book is about uh, a rabbit <laughs> falling asleep. Um, 60 years, Goodnight Moon. In the great green room, there was a telephone, and a red balloon, and a picture of a cow jumping over the moon, and there were three little bears sitting on chairs, and two little kittens, and a pair of mittens, and a little toy house, and a young mouse, and a comb, and a brush, and a bowl full of mush, and a quiet old lady who was whispering, hush. Good night, room. Good night, moon. Good night, cow jumping over the moon. Good night, light and the red balloon. Good night, bears. Good night, chairs. Good night, kittens and good night, mittens. Good night, clocks and good night, socks. Good night, little house and good night, mouse. Good night, comb and good night, brush. Good night, nobody. Good night, mush. And good night to the old lady, whispering, hush. Good night, stars. Good night, air. Good night, noises everywhere. How was that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Mm -hmm. I remember that one. That's like mm -hmm. a, an, an old one. I think my, my favorite... Uh, I don't know if my, my parents ever actually read like... Uh, bedtime stories to make us go to bed. I think we just sort of went to bed. Um, you know, maybe they hang out with us or something. I do know that my mom would sing songs to me. Uh, you know, the up on the treetop, the cradle will fall down, come will cradle baby and all or something. Um, there is the, this one really good book, uh, and I probably won't read it this time, maybe next time. Um, I think it's called, uh, I love you for always. You guys remember that one? I love mm -mm. you for always. I love you forever. As long as I'm living, my baby you'll be. Does Never that ring a bell? Never heard of it? Yeah, I don't think I have, I have either. It's a really good one, and it's very special and important to me. So maybe that's that's probably the one. Um I do. I didn't know it was a book. I thought it was just something that my mom would say to me, um, but I I saw it in like book class, uh, like one year, like a, a couple years back, and I was like, oh my goodness, this is like a real thing. And then I I took it home to my mom. And I was like, mom, look at this, and you know, it was like a really cool moment. But yeah. Um, basically the story is that. Uh, 
the mother would say that bedtime thing to her child all while they were growing up, even when the child grew up to an adult and uh, even went to live in their own house. Um, and then when the, the mother was so old that she couldn't get out to bed, her son came in to see her and then he picked her up and rocked her and sang the things to her. It was just like a really very touching thing of like repaying or whatnot. Anywho. I read that in Spanish class. We'll just tell your mother you hmm. ate it all? What does that mean? It's a it's a, re a response to the the pie comment high five made. Oh. Pie comment? Yeah. Pie. When I said pie in the chat. Cuz it's like Oh. Uh, gotcha. Uh, 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 and I said, "Hi." <laughs> Don't fuck the pie. <laughs> Anywho, let's let's end the let's end the, the stream there. Does anyone okay. have any partying words or anything? Remember to Remember. fasten your seatbelt. Or only you can prevent forest fires. Hydrate or dehydrate. Eh? Indeed. Life um. sucks and then you die. <sighs> Always ask before you pet doggies. That's a good one. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. True facts. Uh, I'm gonna make a callback to only you can be yourself, and there's nothing wrong with that because you are made your way for a reason. There's a reason that you are here, the way you are, doing what you do, so just keep doing that and never stop. Because uh, it's very important and it affects and helps other people too. So don't be afraid to be different or be weird. Just be yourself unapologetically. Mm -hmm. Night. Night night.